Good morning. Welcome to Admiral Markets to this live webinar looking at the technical side of, of course, at the charts, forex, commodities, stock indices. My name is Chris, and uh, we're going to take a look at live market trading right now. First of all, though, be aware of these disclaimers. First of all, uh, this webinar is shown to a global audience. The recording later on too, but it may not be suitable for everyone. Please take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity for more detail and information. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, so we, of course, typically take a look at discretionary technical analysis. That entails four steps, defining the trend and momentum, we want to know what the direction the price is flowing, and we're trying to trade with that flow. Sometimes, of course, there's a moment where the momentum and trend seems to be ending. In that case, we uh, I might take a look at reversal trades, but typically uh, that doesn't occur that often. Reversal trades are more rare, and uh, I'm typically looking for trend continuation or momentum continuation. All right, basically very simple. When you're trading, uh, where you're swimming, for instance, against the current, it's a lot more difficult than swimming with the current. So that is uh, the same principle, the same idea is valid for uh, price movement as well. All right, looking for opportunities, how to trade, like Fibonacci patterns, step two, step three, checking if there are any filters, stopping the trade from developing. And step four is taking a look at how to trade it, where am I looking to enter, how am I looking to enter, and what kind of reward to risk is available there. Alrighty, so with that said, let's take a look at uh, our calendar right here. So we see that uh, basically we had some data already released in Germany not so long ago and in, uh, from China a few hours ago, some, some positive green numbers appearing. So that could uh, give some boost maybe to the global economic outlook here for the last part of uh, 2016. Otherwise, today we got the pound inflation rate, so we have a heavy pound news coming up, ZEW economic sentiment index. Uh, but the rest of the day, as you can see, a lot of lighter news and medium news. So take a look at that as well. Uh, regarding webinars, by the way, this week we don't have strategy tomorrow, but we do have uh, basically Wednesday Nenet's expert opinion on trading school, high volatility trading method. Thursday, we take a look at the trading supply and demand right here. And next week, of course, we have uh, more webinars coming up. So this is uh, our schedule of this week. If you're not used to how it looks like, it's a bit different design. So, uh, But basically, you see the dates here, and you just have to click on it, clicking on this, as you probably know. But if you're looking at the recording later on, then uh, you can join webinar like that. Just click on the uh, on the icon, basically, or the, or the image and you'll go to the next uh, registration tab. All right, we got some uh, interesting developments, I think, going on. Some pairs that I would like to show you that I think are interesting. So let's do that right now. Let's start with the Euro dollar as usual. Now, the Euro dollar is maybe not one of the most interesting ones, but uh, then again, it could change quickly. There is a triangle going on. There are a couple of candles going sideways. So at this point, not that interesting to trade, perhaps, but when it breaks out, I think it could be uh, more interesting. Let's take a look at the breakout, specific breakout what I'm looking at. Well, first of all, yesterday's video, I was looking for basically a resistance bounce or bounce of resistance at around 112.50, 112.75. So anyone who listened to yesterday's uh, recap video, basically 10 minutes per week on Mondays, you can find that by going to analytics, clicking on technical analysis. This is wave analysis. That's always you can find it in the mornings but if you go to technical analysis uh, that is a couple of times per week Nana talked about a rooftop pattern in progress uh, on the pound uh, yesterday I talked about bounce and break spots here so that you can find a technical analysis yesterday I was talking about price bouncing at you know there was basically confluence of the 38 and the 61.8 fib or the 50 and the 78.6 fib roughly speaking and uh, price did that after making a three wave move up it didn't break through that level and price is about 50 pips away from that. So anyone who is 
perhaps in that trade, um, I think can move to break even or just move the, break, the stop loss to above these tops. And the trade is uh, good to go. I think the target of aiming at 111.75 or more aggressively at 110.25 are potential targets. So if price now is in a bit of a mini triangle, all right? So if we add these trend lines like this and trend lines like this, you can see that it's building a, uh, a consolidation. So a break of this could see a fall down to 111.75 and down to the bigger triangle indicated by the pink lines or magenta lines. All right, so that's one way to go. But we need a break because this triangle could also break to the upside. In that case, uh, yesterday's trade will end up roughly at break even. Yesterday's short that I discussed, uh, and um, there's a good chance that price might make it up to the next resistance cluster, which could be either at 112.75 still or maybe up at 113. I think those are still resistance levels that are worth paying attention to. There's still a bigger triangle here up as well at 113.11-ish. Uh, ish. So I don't think there's really much to trade to the upside if it breaks to the upside. If it breaks through 112.50, I'm not too keen on breaking it to the upside. I'd rather let it you know, drift up as far as it wants to and look for price action or candlestick pattern, uh, basically patterns uh, at the candlestick patterns at resistance. If it does break to the lower side, though, if it breaks the triangle uh, and breaks support, then I do think there's a good intraday trade here in this relatively small piece 50 pips or so maybe even less so not a grand uh, grand size there but then if it breaks through the next layer of support i think there's a lot more space as you can see let's take a look at that four hour chart if it breaks through this 111.75 we've got another 50 pips here and another 50 pips 60 pips here and then another 60 pips here right to the next confluence at 110 the minus 61.8 target and another trend line all right, so that does not have to be one day. This could be split in multiple days. It could be even split in this and next week. We have to see how you know, how much momentum is is available, how much momentum we see in the market. Difficult to tell at this point. Um, but that is kind of the real estate in a way uh, or uh, space that uh, is available. So trades here was one trade yesterday I think this is another trade I think this is basically another trade could be split in a couple of parts there and this is another trade so quite bearish indeed looking at the number of red circles but uh, if it uh, breaks above the resistance here then there is some potential for upside by the way also at this there could be a bounce worthwhile of uh, taking a trade to the upside I would say so that's the roadmap I'm looking at Let's uh, dive into perhaps a bit more regarding the top blue circle. I need to zoom out then for the, to the daily chart. When this resistance breaks, this triangle breaks, it's breaking to 61.8. The space here available is up to the 78.6 fib, basically, up to 114.60, uh, after which we could find resistance either at the 78 or the 88.6 fib. What could happen is that price breaks with a lot of momentum. If it does so and makes a bull flag, it could break one more time to make a higher high and get divergence between these highs and then turn around at the 88 and trend line like this. You see that? So it depends. If there's a lot of momentum with the breakout, it will probably go to the 88.65, stop at the 78, but then go up to the 88, cause that divergence. So I liked, in a way, I'm not a big fan of ranges. I, I like momentum, but you know, to a certain degree, I kind of find this the zero dollar uh, interesting. Uh, depending on how the breaks go, there could be some some interesting uh, trades. Uh, there, in a way, it's a funny one because there there are multiple triangles within triangles. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's it's it's quite a consolidation. But despite that, I think it's uh, some potential there. On the longer term, we're looking at a purple ABCDE, I think. So if it does make that fall, uh, then I would expect still a bounce at D. In fact, the fall I talked about here from 111.70 111, to 110, that is actually just a fall within the medium triangle here, as you can see. And then there's even a larger triangle right here. So there are about four degrees of triangles at the moment. Uh, once it makes this fall, 
from 11170 to 110 indicated by the red circle. I think if it breaks 110, there could be another fall down to 107, 108, 10750. I perhaps even down to 106, which I would expect to be bouncing spots with a three wave up, four wave E. And then that's where I would expect the moment of a big turnaround for a big downside continuation after this momentum we had uh, in 2014 and 15. So the reason why I think that the wave D is still in progress and E hasn't started yet is definitely partly due to time. First of all, the leg here, the leg here, and here. So I think that the D has still some time left and could be a bit lower. And the E will probably be a bit bit shorter uh, than D, maybe 61.8 of the time it took for C to D. And uh, let's see when D ends, of course, then we'll know a bit more about the timing of when E could finish and the downtrend of the euro dollar could continue. This is all based on the fact that price does not break above C. If it breaks above C, then E is not valid anymore. And if it breaks below B, then D has been completed or we're making ABC and we're in a downtrend already. From a timing perspective, uh, it's, to a certain degree, probably the break will not to the downside. It's difficult to imagine in a way that it will happen before the U.S. elections. Uh, I think that uh, the market will probably wait for that. Not that it, I, I don't think it will necessarily, you know, whatever the, the, you know, I don't think it will change its course. I think it's still going to be a downtrend no matter what the decision made or, or the, the election goes. But I think the market somehow still rather waits for that event to be to be completed. So I don't expect that. It could be that we don't even get it this year, basically. We might get it next year. Um, and that is not so strange in a way, uh, considering the fact that this is a wave four. Wave four can take quite long. All right, so that's piecing together all these triangles. Uh, once again, here on the daily chart, you can see it pretty well. That's the space for that D. Here's that smaller space, and here's a smaller space. And uh, I should use red, sorry. Red here, red here, red here. And a bounce here, a break here, and a bounce here, and a bounce here, and a potential bounce here. So that's the bigger picture. Let me see if there's anything else to add. Do you want to add something, perhaps? Uh, some indicator that you use, maybe, or wave count, anything? Feel free to, to add. At the moment, there's definitely uh, indecision on this hourly. But uh, so let's see which way it breaks. That's the good thing about trading it roughly in here. It's, you know, one, it's easy to move to break even and see if it breaks. If not, no, nothing lost. Good morning, by the way, Edith and uh, Bernard. So good to see you. Let's see if we uh, have any questions. Otherwise, I'll move on. I think the pound USD could be interesting too. And the dollar yen, by the way. Let's take a look at that right now. So pound USD. All right. This is how I look at it. Also interesting, I think from a different perspective, but obviously we're correcting here too. Uh, after a big fall, price is still correcting, but there is some upward slant here, as we can see in recent price action with this uptrend channel. Price is at the bottom, bounce at the bottom, bounce to 50 fib. Yesterday, uh, we were saying that there's probably gonna be one more lower low. It didn't get to the 61.8, unfortunately, bounced basically, made a lower low, but in all honesty, Oh, slide is euro dollar. Let's see. It should be pound USD. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, made a lower low, but you know, from our human eye, we can see it's more of a double bottom, isn't it? So yeah, for those that were waiting for the 61.8, that didn't happen, unfortunately. So that entry was missed. Um, if you perhaps were more aggressive and, and took it earlier, then you're in that long. Congratulations. You're up a lot, some 100 pips, I guess. 
good job. If you traded the break, then this would be the breakout candle right here on hourly chart at least. That would be the breakout candle. And you're up a few pips. Not many, but a few. And if you're not in that trade, let's talk about that then. So I think that this is still, there are two scenarios here. This is going to be interesting because one is, it looks like it's making a bearish correction here. The thing is, is this a bearish correction for upside or was this a bullish correction for downside? Uh, I'm open to both, really. I think both could happen, but at this moment, I'm not interested in the downside as much. Because ultimately, I think that if I look at the four-hour chart, I think that there's a bigger chance of, of a bounce to the upside. Now, certainly, you could persuade me with the fact that there is kind of a head and shoulders here uh, going on, potentially with a neckline here. But uh, at this point, I would rather see the break of the neckline before training it to the downside. Then there's a fall potentially to the 61.8, 78, and further. At this moment, considering this uptrend channel, considering the fact that I think that some targets up here are still very feasible, I don't want to short in this uptrend channel. So I'm not interested in shorting it as yet unless it breaks that, uh, that, this channel. Let me add this to the hourly chart. All right, so let me tell you what I am interested in. Still think that this is a break of this bearish channel. And in fact, I think that this could dip down, retest the support line, make an inverse head, well, roughly an inverse head and shoulders here, bounce basically, and start to make an impulse towards those targets. That's really the trade I'm interested in, is to bounce off the trend line. I might be wrong, of course. I mean, this is just, uh, how I analyze it and what I'm waiting for. And perhaps uh, what happens is price falls, makes a bit of a bear flag and breaks that bear flag. Well, obviously then I change my cap from uh, from bullish to bearish. And uh, I would probably, the way I would want to trade it is, I would, pr I'm not sure if I would be able to catch this break of this bear flag. I mean, the one way to, if there's a good candle that could be tradable is the break of this bear flag. Let me draw that a bit better. Let's say it falls here, makes a bear flag, right? So let's say it breaks with a good candle like this, right? One way would be to trade that break like this. The other way would be to let this momentum zoom into a time frame lower, perhaps like 15, wait for this momentum to ride out, look for a correction, and look for the, the, the pattern break of the pattern break. Like that. All right, so... That would be ways of trading downside. Upside, however, uh, would require, from my point of view, looking for good bullish candle here on hour or four hour, roughly around 132.75, 132.50, 75. One thing I can do, let me get rid of this fib on the four hour chart. Target, by the way, here, roughly 135, 135.50. Let me get rid of this four hour here and zoom into the hourly and let's put a fib from here to here. So these fibs, 135.50, 132.75, I think uh, are crucial. And let's see if we get a bullish price action uh, reaction here on hour or four hour. And what I want to see basically is not too slow of a start. Unfortunately, if it will go like this, it might still be upside, but it's also looking at the bear flag at the same time. So if it moves like that, I take the bounce, but I see it move slowly. I will take precautions by maybe exiting or moving the trail. Uh, if it moves fast, that's what I want to see. I want to see basically a V pattern. I want to see a, a move down and a move up quickly. And I want to see that momentum come into the market. And then after that, if I see a bull flag, that's fine. I'll continue with the break like this. So a v, v pattern basically is indicating little space between the fall and the, and the rise right here where I have the green circle indicating a quick momentum down, a quick momentum up. If I see something like this, uh, that's not what I want to see. So that would mean uh, warning bells and, and, and whistles and alarms because that's that's could still be upside if it then breaks above this resistance line still, it just goes slower. It's possible, but then I'll take the break up in here. 
with breakouts, of course, there's always the risk of missing a trade, but it uh, depends uh, how actively you're looking at the charts. The alternative would be a pending order upon the break of a, of a resistance. So that's about it, I guess. I don't think I have anything to add here. Let's move maybe over to the dollar yen, unless you have a question. Um, but otherwise... I think that's it. Let's see, I'm just thinking if I uh, wanted to add something, but that's about it. So this looks like momentum up on a 15, five waves. So looking for an ABC correction back to those fibs. This is a potentially wave one of two, sorry, one, wave one, two. So twos can go deep potentially. And uh, if the if that is true, if it is a wave one two, then the next could be wave three, which could be a lot of momentum. Should be a lot of momentum. By the way, one more thing. Last week uh, on the euro dollar, remember that we were saying that this could turn into a supply demand zone. Does anyone remember that by any chance? I was saying that I was putting a fib from here to here and looking for a thirty eight or fifty. But if it doesn't, and if it bounces here and then we get a third bounce or fourth bounce that does could be good uh, ways to trade the consolidation zone so this is this is now you see in retrospect how it looks like it's not a guarantee i don't want to say it is a guarantee but it works pretty well well from a wave perspective not that you know that not that you need to know waves but from a wave perspective realize that corrections typically go like this so if you get a bottom break it could be an ABC, but if you get if you get a lack of a bottom break for two times like this, then it could be a sideways zone like this, and uh, and we got that push up. So now now you can see how it looked in retrospect. Dollar again. Ah, great. Bob remembers. Perfect. I always like to check because, uh, not that you think that. Um, I'm I'm saying it in retrospect. So, dollar again. Uh, basically, I'm bullish. I know it's a downtrend. I know I've been bullish quite long, and still the break hasn't happened. Downtrend channel is still intact, but I think there's pretty good arguments here for a potential break in it in some distant future, near future. Obviously, it could be a. We got to realize that this could be a descending wedge too. We got a flat bottom. We got a angled resistance. But I'm trading it only if it breaks that descending wedge. So it needs to break through 100 for me to be interested in, in shorts. If it doesn't break 100, so this is that downtrend channel I was talking about, by the way, right here. Pretty neat. Has lasted uh, a year now, I guess. The correction period has lasted one and a half years. The dollar yen peaked here in uh, spring last year. That's uh, around end of May. And then started a huge correction. So that last part of the correction has been very impulsive in this downtrend channel. Reasons why I'm bullish is because I think that this is looking uh, like a good momentum. It looks like a good five wave as well. And uh, to me, this was an ABC zigzag. We got another five wave up. So never know, but it seems very difficult maybe in a way because it's it's... So many waves one two. This is wave one two. This is wave one two. But that's my current thinking at this point, which means that either price well the, the invalidation level is really this bottom on one hundred. If it breaks through that, then it's, it's bearishness, right? It could still bounce at one hundred fifty as well. But for the moment, though, I don't think it will break that uh, go to that level. I think that this is the bouncing spot. We got engulfing twins here. Uh, this seems to be a five-wave pattern as well. This is a correction. So for the moment, though, actually, uh, I don't think even it will go that low. This engulfing twin, I think, is interesting to trade from my perspective and uh, could be the bouncing spot. The validation level of this wave one, two, is in fact this bottom here at 101, 18, 17. Uh, and uh, the target could be quite ex 
could be quite aggressive because if there's a wave three or ABC coming up, then I'm expecting it to go a lot further than 105, but that would be a, a model target even. It could go further than that. Oh. Let's zoom in here a bit. It could go uh, a lot further than that even. If this is a wave C or, a, uh, or, uh, or three. Three, of course, even further. But assuming, let's say, the conservative count that this is maybe a C, then 107, 20, 105, 60, uh, are conservative, I would say, conservative targets in this particular scenario. So a lot of potential here. So is this a wave 1, 2, 1, 2? We'll find out. The first wave 1, 2 is invalidated only if price uh, breaks this bottom. The second wave 1, 2, sorry, the other way around, is invalidated with this bottom. All right, confirmations of both are really with the trend line break. All right, so I think very interesting this point in the, in the dollar yen. So I think that this is an interesting buy zone from my perspective. Engulfing twins at support. We had a bounce here. We have this is, could be a hook back. And all in all, I think it could be a, a bouncing spot for a break to the upside, despite the downtrend. So I don't think I have much to add. I mean, I can look at lower time frames. I mean, we, obviously there's some mini resistance here on a 50-minute chart. You know, break of that could be another way of waiting and looking for confirmation. But I think, personally, yeah, Golfing Twins is pretty strong on the four-hour chart. Uh, one other way, technique, could be to put a fib on that, wait for uh, a bit of retracement. We already had a 38.2 bounce there. I'm not sure if it's going to get you know down to the 50 or 61.8. Could, doesn't have to. So, yeah, I don't have much to add in that. I think those are just some ways, techniques to... Uh, to micromanage it in a way. Other than that, the only thing I can think of is, let me get rid of, oh, one second. The only thing I think you can think of is basically a, a daily candle poking through this like that. Right, that would be a, a break of this downtrend, small little pullback perhaps, 38, 50 fib of that candle see a continuation it could be a daily breakout right there and if the candle were to be opposite like this then with the close near the, near the low or the close near the high in this case with the blue candle close near the low with the red candle that would be the break of the descending wedge all right that's it from so these three majors i think all have some something interesting going on now, Ozzy, I was saying in yesterday's video that I think this could be a bounce spot at 75 or 74. We actually have a pretty good daily candle of bouncing at that support trend line. And price is retracing that bullish candle. So this could also be a bouncing spot. That would make sense compared to the pound. Your dollar, I'm actually looking for a break to the downside. That doesn't match as much with the Aussie and the pound as... You know, they, they don't have much harmony there. I mean, Euro, I'm more bearish. Pound, obviously, a bit more bullish. Aussie, a bit more bullish. So um, there's not there's no syn synergy there. But we'll have to see. I mean, one could, the Euro dollar could break in the morning. Pound could retrace, whereas the Euro dollar could fall more than the pound. And in the afternoon, as the Euro kind of retraces up, the pound makes a lot more upside. So that would mean that the euro pound is it's probably weakening in that case if that were to happen, right? So that's that's how sometimes counter movements can be explained between dollar pairs or any other pairs with the same uh, you know same shared currency. Uh, Ozzy, though, at this moment, I'm not going to take a order right now personally. I do think it could be a bullish bounce, but I'm not going to trade it it's fifth candle it could be interesting but I have to see some some reaction here with a four-hour or a bullish four-hour candle at least 
maybe maybe an hourly something that could show a bounce at this moment. All right, I will leave it on the Aussie. Maybe there's a bit of uh, delay. Or let me let me refresh it here with the screen sharing. All right, there you see the Aussie now. Good. Sorry, if I probably I was going too quickly through <laughs> through these. Uh, that's my uh, nasty habit. Is I toggle or I change these charts too fast probably uh, too fast for the current uh, upload to to handle the upload speed so yeah so let's see how this reacts I mean I'm not this is I'm not sure if it's going to bounce here I mean it, it looks like a great daily candle it looks like a great triangle so there's definitely some good chance here but I would like to see that a bit more confirmation on lower time frames if it doesn't and it breaks this low, I think it could fall down to uh, 74, which could be another bouncing spot. All right, let me refresh this one. It's a bit crowded. Yeah, you see the chart, great. Pound yen. Uh, I am, well, I'm not too particular a fan of these pound yen and euro yen at the moment. Uh, if I remember correctly, we're looking for a bit of correction to the downside last week. And it did make some, it's kind of making a bull flag at the moment. Like this, or triangle, or descending wedge perhaps. like that so at this point I think these trend lines probably are the only thing that that could give indication if it breaks the support we could see a continuation of this correction down to the 50 fib perhaps 61.8 if it breaks resistance then we could see the continuation of the bullish momentum we had prior to that and we may we might break this high to get the divergence between those tops All right, euro yen. Same thing, basically. Bit different, but also in a triangle. Like this. All right, dollar cad. Dollar cad is is a bit. I'm curious about the dollar cad because. In a way, it's a, in a bear flag type of formation, perhaps, but it could be a channel too. It has made a huge downside here, and now it's kind of correcting. Is this a base for a further rally up, or is this just a kind of a bear flag for one more correction? Now, considering the momentum here, typically I would say further downside is probable. But then again, uh, the dollar is is... I mean, the pound USD has perhaps one more upside, but then I do expect downside. The euro dollar, I think, is already bearish. The dollar yen is bullish. So, you know, from a dollar perspective, I think we're at or close to a dollar rally, which means that also here the dollar should make some upside gains. Uh, so one thing we could do is put a fit from here to here like this didn't really respect these this was close to the 38 but did not really there so it could still hit the 38 but it could be respecting these fibs but moving up these fibs as a ladder at this moment though I don't see any anything particularly interesting could be a short maybe up in here perhaps if, if there's a bounce uh, depends how it bounces. If it bounces with the bull flag, then I become bullish up to the 50 fib. But nothing now at this moment. Euro pound. All 
All right, uh, let, let's see. Yeah, it's made some good downside recently. Well, considering the euro and the, the euro dollar and the pound dollar, uh, I would expect to be uh, to be bearish. There is some kind of potential head and shoulders I, I would I would see here one two three. It's still on the early side though from a weekly perspective. For daily, uh, it I wouldn't be surprised perhaps to see something like this. I I don't see anything to trade at this moment. I think that uh, you know there could be reason for for shorting it. Maybe if it makes a bear flag down to test support, I would still be very careful with this level, which could be the bouncing spot up to the head and shoulders level. So that could be bouncing spot. Blue circle, red circles are potential trade ideas there. It seems like still quite a lot to that needs to happen before this is interesting. What happens has to happen here is at least a bear flag and a break of that. That's the only thing I think that could be interesting that still has some time to go if it happens I don't know because at the moment there is momentum the other alternative would be maybe a quicker break let's put the fibs on here Yeah, I think that at least on the 50 minute chart, I would like to see some pair of flag up to the 38 or 50 fib, break that, make a rising wedge perhaps like this, break that rising wedge. That could be maybe interesting for shorts as a continuation of what I would expect a, a move down to the minus 61.8 target there, which could be, again, a bouncing spot. Yeah, definitely keep an eye on this level. All right, so uh, up, down, up, down on the euro pound. Uh, you're odd. Then we're getting into some, some choppiness and some ugliness, I would say. It does not look that great on the euro odd. I'm not a big fan of it here, too. Pretty strong daily candle, very near the 50 fib. Could be a bouncing spot for downside. All right, let's take a look at this pound odd if it shows the same. Pound odd is a bit more uh, bullish because of the momentum that we had here and could be making navy C zigzag. All right, let's see if there are any trades to the upside here. Four hour is breaking that top. Space up to the minus 272 target at 179. Probably the best is a 50 minute chart, to be honest. At this moment, I don't think um, anything else seems interesting. I mean, a break here would have been good. A pullback, a bounce here perhaps, not a 15, but an hourly like this here. That could have been a, a good way. That has happened already, so that's not an option at the moment. The only thing I think that could be still doable is catching a continuation basically on a 50-minute chart or 5-minute chart. So it needs to make some kind of pause and then and break for that target to 179. All right, this is pound is a bit more bullish, so you can see that that's a bit different with the pound odd as well, because the pound is pushing it more aggressively than uh, than the euro odd. So that's a bit of a difference. All right, but there's the pound news. So 
in about an hour. So who knows how that could do. I mean, it could be bearish news, could bring price back because of that. And then the news is over and it could start rallying. The news could be positive and it could make a spike like this and then correction and continue. So that's something of a bit of a unknown factor at the moment. All right, folks. Well, that uh, that is the current outlook for for I'm looking at at least at the moment. So once again, if you're interested in knowing more about uh, the platforms here, MetaTrader MetaTrader Four Supreme Edition has a lot of extra things that you can uh, use. For instance, mini terminals, one of them. But this Keltner band as well, by the way and a lot more uh, mini terminals sentiment traders you have uh, other indicators order management alarm managers so a lot of things take a look at that free to download right here admiralmarkets.com go to trading platforms here or click on platforms and click on supreme I'm just using a couple of these features, but there are many more. Uh, Poundcat, yeah, definitely. Poundcat, let's take a look at that. A uh, bit different color background here. Let me use the one that I'm used to. All right. Well, looking at the momentum, it's up on the weekly bullish candles, daily too. And uh, daily though, we got to reckon with some resistance up in here. Be careful of that. But uh, yeah, that was a good turnaround, and it's uh, continuing higher. Let's see how far this fib can these fibs can can bring us. All right, looks like the target 176.50 for the moment. But with those heavy resistances in between, quite close to resistance. Once again, maybe here the better trade was the break of uh, this trend line, for instance, or the bounce at the 38. Now, so close to resistance, I'm not sure how much space there is to trade and how interesting that is to uh, to look for trades. I don't think that this resistance levels will cap it necessarily it could go to the minus 272 or even the minus 61.8 so for the moment at this point I'm not interested in, in both ways some might of you might be interested in these bearish candles here because of this top but as you can see I I don't I think that's just a small pause really Uh, there could be on a lower time frame some space perhaps here, right? But yeah, it would have to be a push up, some bare bull flag basically in the break of that, that maybe. So yeah, that, that's about it. That's how I see it at this point. Um, if you have anything to add, of course, let me know. Let me know, Derek, and we can take a look at that. Otherwise, Nenad has his high volatility trading method tonight. And once again, tomorrow we take a look at uh, supply and demand. Next week, Nenad uh, takes a look at MACD patterns. We have strategy next week. We have, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, five remedies against lack of confidence, how to keep the brain sharp. We have understanding the story behind wave analysis, beginning advanced patterns for trading. So a lot of webinars here. I hope to see you uh, in those webinars. DAX, good question. Let's take a look. Quick look at oil. Oil is interesting because I'm curious if it can break 
above this resistance. If it does, I think it could be uh, a bit of a rally up to the minus 272 target. Uh, if it doesn't, and it breaks this support line roughly, uh, then I think it could fall uh, to the 61.8 at least. That's interesting. So let's see how oil responds there. DAX. Sorry about that. I'm using a different template. Let me change that. All right, there we go. DAX is, well, it's basically hanging above resistance at the moment. Has some momentum on its side. All right, so looks like uh, it could make one more higher high, considering this momentum here. All right, bouncing roughly at these fibs. Might make one more push lower. It has a, yesterday was bullish. So this could just be a correction for one more push up to the minus 272 target at around 11.12. There's 1,100, sorry, 11,200, sorry. There's a resistance spot here too. So that's one way of looking at it. Obviously, of course, if it breaks this trend line, then uh, we're getting into bearish territory. As long as it stays above these fibs, I think it's still more of a bounce potential than uh, a downtrend. All right, for the moment, though, hmm, I'm trying to see. how I would potentially trade it, but uh, I'm not yet convinced in anything. This is my analysis, but I'm not that convinced in, in I mean, this could be the bounce. This could be a, a bullish candle that uh, creates the bounce. It's a pity that it didn't go a bit lower to the 38.2 fib. Well, let me say it this way. These, these fibs still remain uh, potential bouncing spots, and if it breaks, this consolidation, there is a there's a breakout potential there to the target. I'm not sure about this candle. It it could, I guess I'll have to see how price responds when it retests this bottom. If there's a bounce, that could be something of a of a start of a rally as well. Well, both gold and uh, and silver are making kind of bull flags here. So if, if there's one more retest of this bottom, if this bottom basically holds and we get a bounce and we get another bounce, then there's a good chance it's going to going to break that uh, correction to the upside. I'll give it a bit more time for this this pattern to develop. All right, folks, thanks again. Wish you all great trading. Take a look at, uh, of course, YouTube channel, Facebook, or just our website, ivomarkets.com. And uh, that's the wrong slide. This is it. And uh, well, wish you good trading. Hope to see you then tonight. And uh, no, that's actually tomorrow night with Nenet and Thursday. Cheers.